The following BLTV program is brought to you by O'Flaherty Law. Please enjoy. Welcome to Learn About Law. My name is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. I hope you find this video and podcast helpful. If you need some help, please feel free to call us at 630-324-6666. We offer free consultations in many areas of law, and we have several geographic locations for your convenience. We serve all of Illinois, and we're also happy to meet with you and provide most legal services virtually without requiring you to leave your home. Enjoy the video. Hi everyone, this is Matt with Learn About Law, and in this video, I'm going to discuss a six-step checklist for protecting your assets from Medicaid. Step one, before you get sick, give monetary gifts to your loved ones. Of course, there's no way to tell for sure whether or when you'll need nursing home treatment. So giving presents to your loved ones ahead of time protects the money from creditors looking to recover after your death. Any properties you pass within the five years prior to joining a treatment facility are liable to seizure after your death while you are on Medicaid. Transferring funds before you get sick protects the assets and guarantees that your loved ones can legally hold the presents you give them. Step two, hire an attorney to draft a life estate for your property. With a potential ownership interest in the home, naming you as the life tr tenant and a loved one you trust as the remainderman, as a life tenant, you have the freedom to stay in your home until you pass away. Following your passing, possession of the property is passed to your loved one, preventing the estate from claiming it. If you build a life estate and pass real estate, you won't be penalized if you end up in a nursing home, as long as the transfer took place at least five years before your illness. However, if you join a nursing home within the five-year period, you will be charged a fee for moving property that would otherwise be eligible for estate recovery. Step three, invest in an annuity with liquid assets. In certain states, annuity pay payouts are not taken into account when deciding Medicaid eligibility. As a result, you can put your savings into an annuity and still be eligible for Medicaid-covered nursing home treatment without having to spend down assets. You can still safely move assets into an annuity if your state considers annuity payouts when deciding Medicaid eligibility, but you won't be able to access Medicaid benefits for a certain period of time after the transfer. Step four, give your spouse a share of your monthly income. Spouses of nursing home patients are covered by the Federal Spousal Impoverishment Act, which allows them to exclude their own wages while paying for their spouse's nursing home treatment. You can direct a portion of your income to your spouse to fill the difference if your spouse's income is less than the sum of your state exempts. The money you send to your spouse for monthly support is tax-free and covered under federal law. Step five. Use an irrevocable trust to protect your assets. An irrevocable trust, unlike a living trust, is not subject to nursing home costs. While you cannot receive principal from an irrevocable trust, the trust's periodic interest and dividends are safe from seizure. Step six, put your assets and those of your spouse into a pour over trust. This form of trust prevents your assets from being seized while also allowing you to access the funds. Create or update your wills to provide a testamentary truth trust for the surviving spouse's benefit. While some funds from the initial trust pour over into the assets of the deceased spouse, the testamentary trust contained in his will prevents the money from being seized to pay for nursing home expenses. This protects both you and your partner from financial ruin, regardless of who dies first. Lastly, some warnings and suggestions. The spousal maintenance cutoff amounts differ by state. However, for each dependent adult child or minor child residing in your household, you can increase the monthly amount you designate to your spouse by one third. 
State Medicaid authorities have the right under the Omnibus Budget Reconciliation Act of 1993 to recoup any funds expending on your nursing home treatment from your estate after you die. As a result, any properties you did not adequately shelter until joining the nursing home could be lost for your decedents. If you give monetary gifts to family members in excess of the annual limit, you might be subject to a gift tax. The maximum amount you can send to a loved one tax-free fluctuates on a regular basis. On the IRS website, you can check the current tax-free gift cap. Thanks for watching. To learn more, check out the article linked below. Be sure to leave any questions you have in the comments and subscribe for more legal content daily. Hello again, this is Kevin O'Flaherty from O'Flaherty Law. I hope you enjoyed the video and podcast. If you did, we'd love it if you'd subscribe to our channel. If you need legal help in this or any other area of law, please do not hesitate to reach out and schedule a consultation. Most consultations are free and all can be conducted remotely if you'd like. Please email us, book online, or call us at 630-324-6666. We have many locations for your convenience and we serve all of Illinois. So thanks again for watching.